Uh, we do more autopsies in this facility than anywhere else in the state of Colorado. Uh, this facility is unique in a couple of characteristics. Uh, number one, this office, unlike any of the others in the state, um, was designed for growth, which means that the taxpayers of El Paso County should not have to build a new facility for 25 years or so. Another thing that is unique compared to some offices, all of our death investigators are board certified medical death investigators, and we also uh, make all the scenes outside of a hospital uh, when, uh, when notified of a death. We also transport bodies, again, something that not all of the coroner's offices have in this state. Uh, we have equipment here that nobody else uh, in the state has, including our toxicology laboratory and also including what's called a LODOC scanner. The second most important function that we do here in this office, uh, besides determining the cause of death, is to establish the scientific identity of a deceased person. This is uh, the LODOC scanner. This is manufactured by a South African company that takes 13 seconds to scan a scan a body from the tip of their head to the bottom of their toes. This was a case that we did recently of a John Doe, uh, and you can see the, uh, the scan, and what ought to stand out to you is the left knee area, and that indicates a, a, uh, an artificial uh, joint prosthesis, a total knee replacement. Uh, orthopedic hardware like that has serial numbers on it, so we can get those serial numbers, we can determine uh, with some help uh, by an orthopedist uh, if we need to, uh, who manufactured that, can get that number and they can tell us uh, uh, oftentimes what hospital that was installed in and what date and then we can go to the hospital operating uh, uh, supervisors, uh, typically an RN, who's going to be able to tell us a name and then once we get that name we can uh, subpoena and get a hold of the chart and then at that point we'll see uh, in that chart um, that number inscribed and if it matches then that's a scientific identity. So this is just an example of our scanner and what it tells us. We have the only post-mortem toxicology forensic uh, lab in the state of Colorado and so we do not only the toxicology from uh, our own cases and the ones that are sent to us from autopsy from the other 23 counties that we do autopsies for, but we also do toxicology for uh, several other counties in the state, uh, including Arapahoe County, which uh, sends us uh, probably three or 400 specimens a year. This is the uh, toxicology laboratory, and we're looking at the uh, uh, instrument room as well as the preparation room. Uh, we're able to uh, look at uh, uh, over a hundred different compounds and not only tell what compound is there but how much of it is there. This is a uh, gas chromatograph mass spectrometer in the uh, nomenclature we call it a GCMS. This has historically over the last 30 years or so been the workhorse of the toxicology laboratory. This particular instrument we were able to get on a federal grant several years ago and the cost for it was approximately $115,000. It, it has a uh, computer that uh, uh, has a library of uh, all the known compounds and you can uh, literally start the machine running and it does everything automatically and you can come back in the next morning and you have all your data. We have the ability to do things that nobody else does and we can do them in-house and so that means that turnarounds times are quicker. We've recently in the last year are uh, leasing to buy a, a LCMSMS, which is a, probably the most advanced toxicology instrument that there is. Uh, we got it at about 44 cents on the dollar. It had never been used and that has meant that our toxicology turnaround times for most things now are about two weeks and it used to be about eight weeks. Um, our uh, budget is about $2.1 million a year. Uh, of that budget, we're going to bring in uh, about $500,000 in the extra fees that we generate from doing out-of-county autopsies and also doing uh, out-of-county toxicology work. This uh, is a separate area that we do autopsies on, skeletal remains, individuals who are badly burned or decomposed uh, bodies. Uh, it has a separate one pass through of air on a, on a high velocity kind of system uh, that has a 
negative pressure in the room so it sucks air in and then puts it out. Uh, this means that the rest of the building then it does not uh, suffer uh, from the bad odors that can come out of these kinds of autopsies. This is the uh, decomp morgue. It has one autopsy station, uh, whereas the main morgue had four. Uh, one of the things that uh, is evident uh, in when we do autopsies, we try to have all the light that we can have. We have lots of extra lights, uh, surgical lamps, as well as uh, um, uh, ceiling. And then in addition, uh, you can see on the wall uh, a large uh, window. If you look at it from the outside, it looks like a mirror. And on the inside, we can adjust how much UV light comes in, which means we can get 100% of the light that's, that's out there to come in and gives us plenty of natural light, which can be very important in some kinds of autopsies. Uh, in our old building, we had a couple of situations where um, the um, air from the morgue was vented into the administrative area and we've had at least one instance where um, my personnel uh, were all tested for uh, tuberculosis uh, and followed up by the health department because of potential uh, inoculation from uh, an individual that died that we did not have any idea had tuberculosis. Well, we have a county population probably 635 to 650,000. We have uh, 4,400 plus deaths a year in this county in the last couple of years. And last year we had investigated 3,800 of those deaths. We had brought in uh, probably close to uh, uh, 800 bodies and then uh, the majority of those had received uh, full autopsies. Uh, in addition to those dying in El Paso County, we perform uh, over 250 uh, and probably this year will be close to 300 autopsies from uh, 23 of the other 64 counties in the state of Colorado. The El Paso County Coroner's Office job is to uphold and perform the uh, post-mortem uh, inve investigations and or autopsies uh, on individuals who die uh, typically suddenly and unexpectedly in, in El Paso County, either from trauma, uh, drugs, undetermined means or suspicious means. Um, our function comes from state statutes where we are to uphold uh, those statutes and set out exactly what kind of cases we're supposed to um, investigate and also uh, in some degree uh, spells out which cases uh, have mandated uh, autopsies. And we also uh, take pride in, in uh, talking with uh, family members uh, when they call. So you're not going to get, well, he's too busy, or he's not here, or yeah, I'll call you back later. If you get a, he's here and he's busy, it means he's busy, or she's busy, and at the end of the day, or certainly the next day, we're going to call you back with as much information as we have.